Okay, let's remember how a D-latch works, or what is a D-latch. A D-latch, if this is analog uh, circuit, we would have track mode, we would have hold mode. These two modes, uh, sometimes we call track as transparent. Also hold uh, again, or opaque. So we have a clock. Our clock signal uh, sets these states. In tracking mode, the output just uh, goes right through. Hold mode, the state stays the same. You could model this really as a uh, switch. We could say, uh, I'll use D since we're using D. We have D. In track mode, we just have a wire. Okay. Or a Q. We just have a wire, and we have a switch. So we say clock here. Track mode, the switch is closed. D just, or Q just follows D. And then in hold mode, we open the switch, break the contacts, and uh, Q stays whatever it is. Uh, in this sort of circuit, Q is then undefined. What we really have is we have a capacitor here, our hold capacitor. And we'll see that most of the time this capacitor or this capacitance is uh, just part of the circuit. We don't add an explicit or extra capacitor here. How do we do a switch in uh, CMOS? Well, remember we have uh, MOSFETs, our switches. Here's our clock phase. And we have a uh, switch here. Turn my volume down just a teeny little bit. Okay, we have a switch. This is good for. It's really only good for low only. What we do is remember that uh, if this is high, uh, let's say 5 volts in our process we're using, then our D and our Q need to be low so we get a nice uh, channel here and a low on resistance. We uh, deal with this situation by just putting two transistors in parallel, an NMOS and a PMOS, and feed them opposite. So if this is plus 5, this one is 0. And if this is 0, this is uh, plus 5, or VDD. In both cases, in the blue case, this transistor would be on. And then the gate of the PMOS is 0. It's on, on uh, state. So this is our switch. We call this a transmission gate. And it has a symbol, a circuit symbol that looks like like this. It's a little tricky to tricky to draw. And here's where our clock clock uh, signals go. The bubble is always on the PMOS, and the not bubble is on here. And we just have phi and phi bar, or whatever. These are always these two signals are always equal and opposite for each other. All right, so that's uh, that's that. We have a switch. Well. Uh, this is just really a series resistor, a switch and series with a resistor. We can put a buffer here. Of course, that uh, is an inverter. Uh, so we have Q bar here. And at node X, remember at node X, we have this little uh, uh, capacitor. This capacitor, remember the inverter schematic, looks like this. Okay, VDD, zero. Call that Q bar since it is. And that's node X. Every transistor we have has a gate capacitance. This also has a gate capacitance. Here, remember, if this we do an AC equivalent circuit, these two capacitors end up in parallel. If this transistor is 1x wide and this transistor is 2x wide, which is our standard sizing, then the total capacitance here would be 3C and you've seen the 3C before. All right, this is not the only way to do it. We have a switch in series with this. We could also buffer the input here. So the logic uh, is, is the same. Uh, it's just another thing. What this does is this presents a nice load looking in is uh, we also have this is a C in of an inverter. Over here we have this. We have uh, capacitors 
here and when these waveforms are changing we have current that gets injected uh, into the D node and sometimes that's not what we want. Alright so now we have a switch and a buffer or a buffer and a switch as we decide to go. The problem is here we go Alright, it looks like we have an off switch, but really these capacitors, the charge will leak off. It will start at uh, whatever value it is, and over time it'll just go down and go somewhere. It won't go, may not go all the way to zero. If it starts at zero, it might come up and stay somewhere. Uh, we need a problem, or we need a solution for this, which is to set the, I'll say want, We want to do this forever. We can do this with with what we call a static uh, circuit or latch. There's a latch. Cross coupled thing. All right. So our next circuit up here. All we have right here is we have this circuit. Okay. This is before a switch and a buffer. Remember, this is the same thing as as that. It's just uh, this logic notation that you're familiar with. This transistor or this uh, inverter here is going to, uh, lots of names for this, but we're going to hold this node here. Whatever X is, it's going to stay at that logic level. The reason this is small when I say small size, I mean small width, which is width over length ratio. Okay, we have another buffer here. I'll talk about that here in a second, but we have D. This is our structure. D switches on when the switch is held. When the switch is closed, D goes right to Q, and in this case, uh, we'd have to label this Q bar because this is an inverter. Okay, this never inverts. It's just connected or not connected. And then this thing, when this switch goes open, when we're in hold mode, which in this case, when phi, our clock goes low, which means this one goes high, X will be disconnected. This, uh, if this is low, this is, node is high, this, no, or this inverter makes it low again, and then it holds it in this uh, feedback loop. Okay. We don't want to take our output from uh, this node because, actually, this is Q. Uh, Q... Oh my goodness. It's Q bar. Can't think right now. Okay. The reason we don't want to, we want a little buffer here sometimes, is we could take our output here. We could call this Q bar also, as you can see. But this is attached to some internal stuff. If I have over here some other humongous loads um, of logic here, I'm going to slow down my delay from this node to this node, from X to this Q bar which slows down this and that really affects my timing for my latch. We'll see that's our timing for a flip-flop too. I don't want to do that. If we do this then we uh, this environment is uh, very nice. This is the inverter that drives our load. Output load. Okay we can modify this also if we like this buffer concept is put a buffer at the start so now all of this structure in between, which I'll draw a circle around that, all of this is a uh, uh, predictable environment. I like to predict things. It's uh, very nice for design. So we have that predicted up. Okay, so that's a latch. This has two states. We have D and phi. Okay, so if we have phi is uh, 0, phi is 0, 1, 1, uh, 0, 1, 0, 1. Okay, let's just do a truth table here. Node X, node Q. Well, uh, I'll call this node, well, we can do that later. All right, if phi is 0, this is off. Okay, if that's off, 
node x is just whatever it was before x minus x minus it was held to whatever it is so this is q minus whatever it was before see we have q we like to do our output uh, polarity with respect to the inputs and this path we have one inversion this is just passed through and then two inversions so it's q not q bar in this case watch out for that so this q previous all right now when our clock is high this switch is closed you can view it like a short circuit better it's to view it like a resistor in series okay that's good for rc time constants and then Note X, D is 0, this is 1, this is connected, so X is a 1. X is a 1, we have inverted, we're back to a 0, same thing, 0 and, uh, and 1. So this is hold mode, and this is track mode, or transparent. Okay, what's on the next page? I don't remember. What is this thing? you ever seen one of these circuits before? I have no idea. All right, what we can do is we can take, see if I can do this off to the side, we have a inverter. Okay, I'm gonna draw this, this circuit right here and do an evolution uh, of that, okay. And then we're followed by a uh, transmission gate. Okay, phi and clock bar in here. Well, remember, this transistor is for low only. This is only good for lows. This transistor is only good for highs only. So when this transistor, when this uh, inverter is outputting a high this transistor is on and we have current flowing through it doesn't flow through this one there's two transistors in parallel this one has a high resistance because it just VGS gate to source or gate to source or gate to drain there's not much channel on the top all of the current will flow this way and actually through the PMOS and not the NMOS alright so for outputting a high this this is uh, the only transistor used and, and that one's not I'll do another color when we're going to output a low this transistor is on and current flows this way but it really only goes through the NMOS transistor and not the PMOS transistor because it's only good for for highs we can do that be like okay uh, take these two transistors split them apart and do something like this okay I'll draw some arrows here in just a sec. All right, PMOS, PMOS, NMOS, NMOS. Okay, I'm going to put my input to the inverter here, my output for the inverter is right there. And then I have this transistor, is that one, and this transistor is that one. which means we need to uh, hook up our input signals so the NMOS transistor gets hooked to, to phi and this one hooks gets hooked to clock bar if we take this one we would call this a tri state inverter sometimes we have a tri state buffer it's just uh, we have an extra inverter in there and that symbol looks like this You can put the bubble on either side, okay? Which is the same thing over here. The bubble is just on the input instead of the output. So same number of transistors. This one's just a little better because we can combine the diffusion and get less capacitance. We can do that at this node. Uh, we have combined can't quite do it here if we treat these as two separate cells if we combine these into one cell we make a structure that looks like that and that's our symbol and then we get a little bit 
smaller, a little less capacitance, and that's good. You combine that together, uh, of course, a variation. Uh, this, sometimes we might have a buffer there. That's all this figure is, is uh, adds one more buffer. All right, last page. Okay, all we did is we took our tri-state buffer. We have uh, this. We have uh, uh, picking this off for our actual output. This is just to hold. Uh, hold the state. This one, not sure why uh, I printed that, but that's uh, it's about the same. Just doesn't it has the bubbles in the uh, normal ways, I guess, if we want. No, it's just missing the uh, missing the inverter here. All right, why? Here's the thing. Why put a switch there? Well, otherwise, we have a situation like this. When our switch is on, this is our schematic situation. We have this, we have an inverter, we have a resistor, okay, which is our TX gate, transmission gate, and then we have an input, okay, but also we have our inverter over here that's outputting uh, to here. So what we have is we have these two fighting. If when we close this switch these were different values, this node and this node were different values, we'd have a fight, we have a voltage divider, it's not actually a voltage divider but it's similar to a voltage divider and <laughs> we need to win. Okay, we talked about this way before break. To win, how do you win? Well, uh, I'll call this one 1 and 2 and 3. Well, 1 And so transistors, the transistors in here need to be wider so that this on resistance is lower. This needs higher on resistance. We also have this in series. We have a voltage divider situation that's uh, 1. Here's Tx. Uh, this might be P on. And this would be N on. Okay, here's node X. Node X. And if we have zero being output here, uh, we have uh, VDD here. X needs to be greater than uh, V I, or actually V V switch, but also V I H. Uh, for number three, ran out of space. All right? If we just break this connection and put a switch there, then they never fight. Because do you notice? Clock and clock, these are never on at the same time. what we have for today.